Hello all, welcome to this session. In this session, I am going to answer one of the Selenium interview questions. That is, explain the concept of object repository. Let me answer. So what is this object repository? First of all, okay. So let me answer that object or repository. So it's a place where you store objects, okay? In simple words, object repository is a place where, where we can store objects. So what are these objects? These objects are nothing but locators, okay? In case of test automation and all, these objects are nothing but is equal to locators, okay? So what are locators then? Locators help the Selenium automation tool, okay? Locators are nothing but the things which help Selenium automation automation tool to locate the web elements or the elements on the web pages you see there are a lot of different elements on the web pages right like a button checkbox field text box field text area field okay drop down field multi selection box field okay uh, like the many type of elements are there hyperlinks and all those stuff okay this kind of different type of web elements will be there on the web pages. And Selenium is by default blind. It cannot uh, find out where exactly this button is on the page. It cannot see where exactly this uh, radio button or, or checkbox field is on the page. That Selenium cannot do. So Selenium has to take the help of something known as locator. There are different type of locators we have, like ID locator. By using, you know, ID HTML attribute, we can create or generate this ID locator. If a particular uh, HTML web element has this ID attribute is mentioned in this HTML code of the page, then you can use ID locator to locate the elements. Then we have name locator, then we have class name locator, then we have link text locator, then we have CSS selectors, then we have XPath expressions, even we have DOM also. But for let's stop here, okay? These are the different varieties of locators we have using which uh, we can locate the elements on the web pages, okay? So Selenium is by default blind. So it cannot see which element is where on the pages, web pages. So Selenium will take the help of any of these locators to in order to locate the elements on the web pages. Okay, that's what is locators. Now, the problem here is, okay, the problem here is these locators are generally hard coded. Okay, so these locators are hard coded in the automation scripts, hard coded in automation scripts. Tomorrow, if this ID attribute value changes for that particular element or this XPath expression changes for that element due to some XYZ changes on the web pages, then we have to go to this individual test. Then we have to go to this individual test where this uh, locator has been used. We have to take out time, find out where exactly, okay? Find out where exactly on the page, okay? where exactly uh, in the automation script, this locator has been used and uh, we need to update, find it out and update it. If it is being used across multiple, you know, multiple tests, then we have to go to each and every test where this locator has been used and we have to update that in the automation scripts, okay? But what we do is, uh, this is the problem with hard coding of the locators in the automation scripts, okay? While writing the automation scripts itself, if you are hard coding the locators, if you are uh, providing the actual locators in the script itself, then this is a problem, high maintenance, okay? Higher maintenance because we have to, if that locator changes, we have to go to that particular, we have to identify the particular script and go to the script and modify that locator, okay? Update that locator later, okay? That is high maintenance. So what we generally do is we centralize the locators. We centralize, okay? We centralize uh, locators into separate files, into separate files. We separate these locators from the individual automation tests. To separate files, like you know, you can take some properties file. Okay, you can put these locators into a properties file. That's possible. Okay, so when you put this uh, into a properties file, when you put this into a properties file, what will happen? You see, if you have uh, hundreds of tests, okay, in that case, you will have around 500 to 1000 uh, number of, uh, uh, just for example's sake, okay, of locators. If you put all these 500 to 100 locators, in a single properties file. The hard coding problem is gone with properties file. You separated the locators uh, from this, uh, you know, um, uh, individual automation scripts. Instead of hard coding, you move them, uh, you centralize that into a single properties file. That's good. That's all good. Okay. One problem is solved. Hard coding of the locators is solved. Okay. But there's one more problem. What is that problem? 
I'll tell you. Okay. The hard coding problem is gone. The locators have been centralized, but the problem here is in a single properties file, if you have this 500 to 1000 number of locators in a single file, tomorrow, a particular locator changes, then we have to go to that properties file. Then we have to go to that properties file and find out, okay, find out where exactly that particular locator to be updated is out of 500 and 500 to 1000 number of locators. It will take some time, right? It will take some time to find out that locator in this, even this properties file, even after centralizing it, it's better than hard coding in the automation script, but still there is a problem in this properties file where you have to go by one by one locator and find out where this uh, locator thing is there and update that locator. Okay. So maintenance will be reduced a bit, but uh, it's still the problem is not solved. The problem is completely solved in this page object model thing. Okay. We have this page object model design pattern we generally use in the frameworks, automation frameworks, where instead of putting this, uh, centralizing this locators into a single file known as properties file, you are going to create some page classes. For example, for the web elements, okay, for locators of the web elements on the login page will be created under the login page. Okay, we'll create a, some page, uh, Java file like login page dot Java, something like that. In under that, you'll put the locators of the elements on the login page only. Okay, only the elements on the login page you'll put under the login page. Okay, locators of the elements on the login page. For example, home page, all the elements, uh, the elements, uh, locators of the elements on the home page will be put under the home page like that respective pages. So here we are not only centralizing using this page object model. We are not only centralizing the locators uh, into separate files, but also we are organizing and categorizing it. So tomorrow, for example, the locator value of, uh, you know, email address is changing. Okay. Email, uh, email address field has been changed. Then you know that that locator will be there in the login page. Okay. You don't have to uh, search across 500 to 1000 locators uh, in a single file. Rather, you know that in login page, there will be a, around five to 10 max locators and you can easily find out uh, email out of five to 10 in that login page and you will update that. You see maintenance is very low here and uh, all your test automation scripts will access the locators from these individual pages. Okay. So this is the advantage of centralizing it and on top of centralizing into properties file, if you follow this page object model, it will be better centralized with proper organizing so that the maintenance will become less. And all this concept of centralizing these locators into separate files, Okay, removing the hard coding of the locators in individual tests and separating them into centralized uh, files, centralized uh, files like properties files or this page object model files. Uh, here, locators which are stored into this uh, centralized files are uh, this process is called as object repository. Okay, object repository. Okay, if you have centralized these locators into this properties file, this properties file will become an object repository. If you are centralizing these locators uh, by separating these locators or removing the hard coding of the locators of the individual tests, and moving them to a centralized uh, page classes files as for a page object model. All these page page classes, okay, having these locators uh, are part of this object repository or can be called as an object repository also, okay. This page classes will contain object repositories where the locators and uh, locators of uh, individual elements on the web pages will be there, okay, in a centralized place. Fine. So hope you got an idea like uh, what is object repository and how it works in real time. So an object repository is a centralized storage of locators in the form of objects. Okay. We generally call this locators objects. Okay. After centralizing these locators in separate centralized uh, files, we call these locators in that centralized files as objects. And that uh, centralized location is called as object repository. Okay. Instead of hard coding these locators in individual automation scripts, we separate them and centralize them into object repository known as either properties files or page object uh, classes, etc. model classes, etc. Okay. Page object model makes object repository even more better. Okay. More organizing. And, uh, you know, if you have a room where only one uh, place is there, you put all the books there, hundreds of books there. And if you want to find a particular book, it will be difficult. What if you have a lot of racks there in that particular area and you put, uh, uh, you organize your books, fiction books into one rack. Okay. Uh, technical books into one rack, uh, story books into one rack. Then if tomorrow, if you want a particular book, you can easily identify the rack in which that book will be there and you can pick the book faster. Okay. That, that happens with page object model thing. Hope you got the example. So hope guys, uh, you understood, uh, the concept of object repository in this session in a detailed manner. Okay. You can explain like this and object an object repository is a centralized storage of locators in the form of objects. And you can additionally add up saying that we will separate the locators, uh, from the individual test into centralized files. And that centralized files are generally known as object repositories. And these locators are represented in the form of objects in that centralized files. Okay. And uh, those centralized files are called as object repository. It can be page object model and all those stuff. And you can explain the advantage and all if you get this question in the interviews. So that's all for this session. Thank you. Bye-bye.